Hello. You're James. Celtic, is that you? Where have you been? Oh man, I have been so busy at work. It's been crazy, I tell you. Busy at work? You? That'd be a first. Hey, hey, I am serious. I am sitting here in my office. Everyone has already gone home, and I have to put in some overtime for my boss. Oh, really? I am terribly sorry. Thank you. I was joking. Dave, would you like to put some lotion on my hot body? S not now, babe. Who was that? Oh, nothing. That was nothing. Anyways, I was going to ask you a favor. A favor? And you're asking me? Yes. You must be pretty desperate, because you must know that I would never, knowingly nor willingly, help you. Oh, come on. You haven't even heard what I was gonna say. There is literally nothing that matters less to me than what you would have to say. I want you to make a new video for my YouTube channel. Have you lost your mind? Why? The last time you had me on in one of your videos, you were yanking our chains for 30 minutes. Oh and have you forgotten what you have done to me the first time you had me on? I don't know what you're talking about. You blew me up is what I'm talking about. Oh that. Come on, you're out of line, but I don't hold a grudge. Let's just put this behind us. Not a chance. No sir. Get someone else to help you with your crummy little videos. I'll eat my hair first, before I'll help you. And that is my final word. So what are we doing here? Celtic has asked us for a favor. He wants us to do the next video for his YouTube channel. What? Did you hit your head on something? You actually agree to this? Yes. Come on. He is a good guy. Why wouldn't we lend a hand? You see he is very busy at work at the moment. Work? What do you mean? I mean work, you lazy slacker. Besides, it's not like this is going to take long to make anyways. That's true. If a hack like Celtic can do this, then it seems as if no skill is required. Precisely. I mean, how hard can it be? To get started, I have already put together an intro, which puts what Celtic usually runs to shame. Shall we hazard a look? Alright. Go. Yes sir. What was that? You call that an intro? Why? Don't you like it? No not at all. It's shit. And what's the point of showing off your stupid flag? That has nothing to do with World of Tanks at all. Of course it does. First, Celtic should really be pronounced Celtic. And which are the six commonly recognized Celtic nations? I don't know. You don't know? What a surprise. They are Brittany, Wales, Cornwall, the Isle of Man, Ireland and Scotland. And second, the British tanks are simply the best. They so aren't. Of course it's the American tanks that are the best. I would not expect anything else from my friend from the colonies. Anyways, let's get started. While I go and prepare some material for the next segment, why don't you, my American friend, provide us with a commentary on one of Celtic's replays? Alright. Piece of cake. So this is a replay of Celtic in his KV-1S, and he is platooned up with Tahiti Man. I can see in his notes that Celtic scribbled something about, OMFG. I cannot believe this shit. Take it away Mike. I said take it away. Alright. Okay. So we are on Serene Coast in a tier 7 match, and Celtic is driving a Russian KV-1S. The KV-1S is a mediocre tier 6 heavy tank, clearly no match for the formidable American M6. Um, excuse me. Yes? I thought that the KV-1S is considered the best tier 6 heavy tank. Some say, it's downright overpowered. Son, you mustn't believe everything you hear. It's all propaganda I tell you. That 122mm gun is so inaccurate, you could not hit the broad side of a barn. See what I mean? And the reload time is shit as well. But hey at least it has good armor. Except it doesn't. I think you're getting the point. I really had no idea. That's right. And if you play close attention, you might actually learn something, my young Padawan learner. For instance, take this Hellcat here on the left. What an epic machine this is. That's an awesome American TD right there. 
Let's see what Celtic is up to. Enemy vehicle destroyed. Kill stealing, what else? Did you notice how he waited for the other guys to soften that poor KV-1 up, before he snatched the kill? To me it looked as if he simply had to wait before he was fully aimed. You said yourself, that the aim time on the KV-1S was very bad. Yeah right. And how convenient for him. You have seen him play before. He is one kill stealing son of a bitch. Besides, you mustn't contradict the master. Anyways, looks like the opponent has a T-29 in a very strong position. He gets underneath Celtic's gun line and he's going to be hard to dig out. Looks like he scores a decent hit at that Tiger. But then it's just a Tiger. His armor is pretty shit. On top of that, the Tiger's driver has an efficiency rating of less than 250. He couldn't find his ass with two hands. Looks like he is back for more. And he gets smacked again. Ha! Huh. Nice. He already got nailed twice, but he still does not even move into cover. What a tool. That T-29 is still down there, and as long as he is there, this flank ain't moving forward one bit. But check out the Chaffee. He has been playing a great game lighting up the enemies. And which nation do you suppose built this excellent light tank? Um. America? Damn straight. See if you try, even you can be smart. Why thank you. What is happening now? Oh I know. I see here in Celtic's notes, that he did not realize at the time, that not one, but two tanks on his team were AFK. Oh that is not good. Not good? An earthquake is not good. Getting stabbed in the heart is not good. But this? This is truly bad. Especially, since one of the AFK tanks is the awesome T-29 American Heavy Tank. Oh my god. Did you see that? What a bad shot. Celtic says in his notes that his cat distracted him. Oh sure. And goes on saying, no really. What the F? Just what the hell is that? I think that would have distracted me too. Oh that is beyond pathetic. Just get that effing lion off the screen. Can you believe that guy? I mean seriously? Well I don't know. Whatever let's keep watching this nonsense. So the T-29 is still down there, and it looks like he is now joined by an enemy Chaffee. Two strong American tanks. I'd say Celtic is in trouble. Oh looks like he is finally growing some balls. But you wait and see what that T-29 will do to him. I see. Very strong. Look even the best tank cannot overcome the sheer stupidity of its driver. Exposing the entire flank like that takes a special genius. Oh hey, Mr. Churchill, what are you doing there? Wandered out a bit too far? Easy kill on this British piece of crap. I don't know, but it seems that the KV-1S has a pretty good gun. And what did I tell you earlier? You said it was mediocre. Then why still argue when it's already been decided? But if the tank is not good, and seeing that Celtic is already on three kills, are you saying that he is actually playing a good game? Well of course not. He's just going against players, who are even worse than he is. Anyways, moving on. The enemy's Chaffee is still alive. And, he has just spotted Celtic. The enemy's artillery has been peppering his platoon mate with shells before, so he clearly has a clear shot at this location, and Celtic better watch out. Oh your great Chaffee just got taken out by our KV-1. No matter. The enemy is capping now. And what does our hero do? That's right. He just ignores that and keeps plowing forward like the power donkey that he is. But remember that Celtic said himself that he wasn't aware of the AFKs. So, are you defending Celtic's complete lack of situational awareness? Why would two tanks be sitting still at base if they weren't AFK? And to make matters worse, his teammates already pointed out in chat, that they have some AFK tanks at base. Got 
but at least he takes out the T-34. He set him on fire too. So what are we looking at now? A Jag Panther versus an Su-152? That's what it looks like. Celtics notes say, sit back and enjoy. LOL, he missed that shot like a donkey. Oh my god he missed that second shot as well? Have you ever seen something like this? This has got to be the worst I have seen in World of Tanks for a long time. The amount of fail displayed in this match is staggering. And Celtic fits right in. He actually bounced off that SU-152. Looks like the only thing that can kill that SU is its own fuel tank. Finally. That was so easy that even Celtic could do it. Oh now he is getting smacked hard by both the RD and the A44. That's game over for you buddy. And the enemy is capping. Right you are. This is all fail on a massive scale. Oh this is just getting worse and worse. Please make it stop. Ha. Just 7 seconds left. Are you kidding me? Celtic gets the top gun in the last second of the game? That bastard. Why? Because he gets the courageous resistance bonus for the top gun, and will earn the same amount of XP, as if he was on the winning team. Oh yes that's right. Well I am seeing here in Celtic's notes, that the KV1 we're seeing here, did indeed have enough time to reset the cap, but somehow he never made it back. Somehow? Just look at him. He is stopping, and what on earth he is doing now, I have no idea. Dude you have to defend the cap for crying out loud. What is he doing? Oh my god. This guy is actually shooting back at the enemies near Celtic's location. But doesn't he realize that his team is being capped by two tanks? Well you're seeing what I am seeing. It does not look like he does. This is so bad. So bad. Do you think he might actually be a bot? Don't think so. And that would be an insult to all honest bots out there, who are just trying to make a decent living. No I think it's the Russian tanks. The Russian tanks? What do you mean? Russian tanks make people stupid. You want proof? Just look at Celtic in his KV-1S. Naturally this was a loss. Thank god this is over. And here we are seeing Celtic on top blah blah blah. No one wants to see that. Just get this off the screen. Do you know what James is up to? Over here fellows. Right. So I want to talk about patch 9.0 if I may. James? What the hell is that? A virtual studio? Yes. Why? You are so old you need to be carbon dated. Do you have any idea how out of place you look in there? And are you actually using a wargaming video in the background? Is he allowed to do that? Of course he isn't. It is called copyright infringement. But if you, like James, live in the countryside, far away from civilization, in a house that was built 5000 years ago, then you probably have never heard of that. Are you finished? Finished? I am just getting started. I want to talk about patch 9.0 and the upcoming changes to the graphic engine. Silent Stalker over at For The Record has posted a few screenshots that were created during the super test, that is currently underway. I want to show you some of those images. Here we can see the graphics as rendered by the current engine on the left, and the new engine on the right. I think you'll agree that the image on the right of the new engine provides a more natural feel. I think the trees in particular, look a bit artificial on the left. They look a bit too dark and don't quite match the rest of the terrain. This next image shows more of the same. The new engine just looks more real. Look at those dark trees on the left, and the contrast which seems somehow artificially high. We can see more of the same in the last image, taken on the Malinovka map. Again, the old engine on the left just looks like the contrast is way up, making it all look artificial. So then it looks as if the new patch will make World of Tanks a little bit prettier, which is nice. Oh wait a minute. Fellows, I think I made a terrible mistake here. 
The images on the left were actually from the new engine, not the current one. Oh really? So I had that reversed, but no matter. No matter? You confused the images? How can that not matter? Don't let the facts get in the way James. Anyways, moving on. Also on for the record I found information about a new premium tank destroyer, the M56 Scorpion. Based on the preliminary information, it could be a tier 7 vehicle with good agility and perhaps excellent camouflage rating. It does not appear to have a rotating turret, but 30 degrees gun traverse, to either side is pretty impressive nonetheless. It's about freaking time that the Americans finally get a premium TD. The Brits have one and so do the French, the Russians have two, and the Germans have even three. I mean what the F. Guys. Have you replaced that background video? Ha ha ha. LOL, I was wondering when you'd notice. Don't you like it? Very funny. Now get it off the screen. Why? I think I have actually improved it a little bit. Who wants to see that? Oh yes I do. You'd better cut it out. On an American Airlines packet of nuts. Instructions. First, open packet. Second, eat nuts. Moo ha ha ha. No really. By all means enjoy yourselves. But I'll continue with the show if you don't mind. Do you guys see what's on the screen in the background? Some sort of login screen? See I told you that you can be smart if you try. That ladies and gentlemen, is the login screen of the patch 9.0 test server. Oh cool. Well what are you waiting for? Log in and show us. Well unfortunately, there is a bit of a problem. You see we are currently in queue position number 75,000. Did you just say 75,000? Yes I have. Oh good, because I actually thought you said 75,000. Are you kidding me? This is going to take hours before we can get on. I'm afraid so. We'll see about that. Let me just make a quick call to Sergey. Yo sir, bold buddy. How you doing? Listen, I wanted to... What? Crimea? What is a Crimea? Oh god. No I was not calling about that. Look, we are making a broadcast here about your new patch 9.0, but we're stuck in the queue. At this rate, our James Year will be living in an assisted living facility by the time we finally get in. I was wondering if you could give us a hand? The account is CELTIIC. Thanks man. That's great. Say hello to your wife and kids for me. Gotta go. Later. You want us to believe that you actually know Sergei Burkatovsky from Wargaming? Oh sure. If you don't believe me, why don't you go and check the queue again? Oh I will indeed. Oh? We're already in position 29,000? You wanna check that again James? What? Now we are up to 13,000? Not for long. Wow, look at that. We're almost there. I don't believe it. How in the name of all that's holy did you manage to do that? I told you I know Sergei. Sergei Burkatovsky. I know. Well whatever. We're in. And we can continue with the program. Oh that's actually exciting. Just a moment. Let me join you over there fellows. Yo oh, Melvin. Do you wanna get that message off the screen? Oh. Yes. Okay just give me a second. Ladies and gentlemen. Behold the new world of tanks garage. That is what a proper garage should look like. I hate to admit it, but for once I have to agree with you. This looks so much better than that crummy old garage we have had to endure for years. It does look good. I like it a lot. Right. Patch 9.0 introduces HD tank models. Currently there are only a few machines that have been updated, such as the Tiger or the American M4 Sherman. And would you look at it? It looks fantastic. Indeed. Let me overlay how that looked prior to patch 9.0 as we fly around the M4. Wow that actually looks completely crappy in comparison. But I must say, that the American M4 always looks good. Such an awesome machine. What the hell is that? Did Celtic actually put a German flag on there? Just what on earth is he thinking? Oh I am sure he only did that to piss you off. Yes it's working. That bastard. I am going to have a word with him. Whatever. Melvin, show me that American tech tree. I want to see that new American TD. Okay. Hum, where is it? 
I don't see it. Why? You don't see it, because it, it isn't, isn't there. there. I was so excited to see that scorpion, and now it's not here. Those were all lies. Rats. Oh I am sure they will add that sorry excuse for a tank destroyer, before patch 9.0 goes live. But much more important than your TD is the new historical battles mode. What exactly is that? It says here it's a battle between the opposing sides based on real historical events. There is no encounter mode, only standard or assault. Assault is for campers. Also, the teams may not have the same amount of players, or drive the same T level of tanks. Finally, the most important part is, that the tanks will fight in historically accurate configurations. Take the Tiger as an example. In historical battles it will be equipped with the L56, and not the Long 71. Weaker guns? I always want bigger guns. But then it wouldn't be historically accurate, wouldn't it? Oh hey it looks as if the ammunition loadout is fixed as well. Right you are. If you think you can run around and use prem shells to compensate for your lack of skill, you won't be happy. Oh that sucks. Look at the Stug. It only gets the L43, which is normally only its stock gun. And that is supposed to be fun? No thank you. But it's not just the Germans that take a hit, but also the Russians. The KV-1S will have to make do with the 76mm. They won't get the 122 in historical battles. Oh how do you feel now, my dear KV-1S drivers? Huh? That makes you happy, doesn't it? Oh hell yes. Melvin, why don't you queue up for a historical battle in the Tiger? Let's see what you can do. Okay. I will do my best. Well I don't know what to think about these historical battles. I am not convinced at all that this is such a good idea. Why? Are you afraid that some of your precious American tanks won't be quite so OP anymore? Well, for the most part, you won't be seeing many of the American tanks at all. For example, all heavy tanks tier 7 and up, T-29, T-32, T-34 and so on, did not fight in any historical battles whatsoever, since they were just prototypes which never entered mass production. So what do you have to say for yourself? What? Were you saying something? I am sorry I must have dozed off. Let's go! I mean look at this match. We have 5 SU-152 on one side facing off against 5 Tigers, and a Ferdinand. Anyone wanna hazard a guess how this is going to end? Okay fine. But don't forget, that this is the first version of the patch 9.0 test server. Of course Wargaming will have to make some tweaks, and I'm sure they will. Okay fair enough. But then let me ask you this. Do you think most people playing World of Tanks like things such as huge damage, loads of kills, Top Gun, Radley Walters or Pools medals? Yes of course. Well then those people will be utterly disappointed. With just 5 tanks on the enemy team, there won't be a chance to get an epic medal whatsoever. A Top Gun is out of the question, unless they include team kills into the count. And what about missions? Many of these are about killing enemy tanks, or doing a lot of damage. So if you play historical battles, you will take much longer to complete those missions. And if that is so, then most people won't play historical battles. Plain and simple. All they need to do is put in missions that are specifically made for historical battles, and that is your incentive right there. True, however that still does not address the issue of those medals. Players like shiny things. Also, how exactly is a fight of 5 versus 6 in a generic map environment historically accurate? When I heard about historical battles I was thinking about something very different. Penetration! Oh nice shooting Melvin. Thanks. Go get him. Oh, I am working on it. Enemy is hit! Critical hit! You tracked him. Nice. That's game over for him. I think that last one may have taken out his gun. Well he is dead now. But Mike, what did you expect from the historical battles mode? Well I did not expect the battles to be less epic than standard 15 versus 15 randoms. I did not expect that historical battles would feel like a smaller version of the regular matches. 
I was hoping that historical battles would get dedicated maps featuring a scale, and an environment that is fitting for the historical battle they are trying to recreate. I was hoping historical battles would allow even more players than just 30 to participate. I wanted historical battles to feel just more significant, and more epic. I wanted to feel like I am participating in history. But what we are getting is nothing like that at all. It's the same maps, with less players on each side, and tanks that have been set to their historical specs. I can appreciate that last part, but for me that does not translate into more fun while I am playing. Let me show you what I think, Wargaming has done with the historical battles mode. Ha! Huh. Very nice. I think I know why the historical battles mode was put in the game. It's because War Thunder has such a mode, and with War Thunder ground forces on the horizon, Wargaming probably felt that they needed to do something rather quickly, or risk losing players to the competition. Enemy armor is hit. Gotcha. So let me get this straight. From what I hear, the World of Tanks community in general seems to embrace the idea of historical battles, and that includes prominent YouTubers. But you seem to know better. We didn't even scratch them. Oh let me guess. Are those the same people who said that the challenge mode was a great idea? And what a great idea it was. It was only in the game for one patch. It was so obvious that it would fail. Matchmaker has already a tough enough time to balance the matches as it is, and by restricting each side to tanks from only one nation, of course these problems would only multiply. I saw that coming from a mile away. You can say what you want. I do applaud Wargaming for trying out new things. Penetration. It is called innovation. Innovation is it? Putting something in the game because your main competitor has it? That's imitation, not innovation. And I tell you what else. Oh please would you? If you create a game mode that limits itself to certain tanks on each side on a certain map, then you remove the element of randomness from the game. It's that randomness that makes 15 vs 15 pub matches so unpredictable. But in historical battle mode, for each map, and each side there will be the obvious strategy to win, and that's what the good players will do. As a result you will get a lot of games that play out the same way. They become very formulaic. This ends up being like a boss fight in World of Warcraft. What? World of Warcraft? Do you mind explaining that? It's simple really. If you are on Erlenberg and play the Russian side, you send your T-34's mediums to one location and your TD's to the other location and so on. Because the Germans only have one Jag Tiger and a Jag Panther, you know where they will be located. Now provided you have competent players on either side, the match basically will play out like it has a hundred times before, with a predictable outcome. Rush the Jag Tiger, and you can't lose. Ironically, it is exactly those competent players that are currently all yuppie dee doo -da about the historical battles, who will get bored first. I think you may be right. Look it is way too early for such a prediction. I am more than willing to give this game mode a chance. It adds variety to the game. And variety is a good thing. Only a fool would think otherwise. After all you do not have to queue up for a historical battle. It is your choice. And that is what it is all about at the end of the day. Choice. I cannot find anything wrong with that. Okay James. Generally I would have to agree with you. I just hope you are right, because I would hate to see the war gaming developers spending a lot of time on a new game mode, which turns out to be a failure. And I think you also would have to agree, that the HD tank models are fantastic, and things like remodeled suspension, an updated damage model and a new engine based on Havoc, are all things to look forward to. Agreed. Yes. So patch 9.0 is going to be great, are we all agreed on that? Yes. Yes. But they better add that scorpion. Ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived at the end of the show, and we find ourselves all agreeing with each other. And on that bombshell, it's time to end. Thank you very much for watching. Good night.